Hey gang, I am Natalie Diaz, founder of Twiniversity and author of What to Do When You're Having To. I like to say it like that, so it just sounds fancy, but you guys know I'm not really that fancy. Today we are talking to our new friend, Josebet, and she is 25 weeks pregnant with identical twin boys, and we're going to learn all about her and her pregnancy. I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm kind of dying to dive in, so I, I've been, like, we've been talking for a few minutes before this, and now I get to ask the real questions. So, Josebet, say hi to the Hi. Universe. Hi. Ah, oh, so now this is your second time around, correct? So you have a daughter, a two and a half year old daughter. So this, you are not a newbie to the pregnancy universe. No, definitely not. No. Uh, how was your, how are you finding this pregnancy in comparison to your first so far? Um, I like to say that this is like a twin pregnancy is a whole other science experiment because um, pregnancy alone is so hard and challenging, um, yeah. different aspects for everybody, but then throw in the mix of the twins and everything is just out of whack times a million. <laughs> so yeah. And But it's identical twins to boot. So to what, like, when did you find this out? Like, tell us about kind of when you first learned that you were pregnant and then how long it was after that, that you knew that it was twins? What was the, the intro to your twin world like? Yeah, so um, really crazy story. Um, I was going through a really bad season of depression at the beginning of the year, um, just to some unrelated circumstances. And, um, you know, not to overly share, but my husband and I were having, you know, our time apart from being intimate. So um, when that did happen, you know, I didn't think much of it because I had been prescribed different, you know, antidepressants to just mm -hmm. kind of keep myself, you know, moving and going. And, um, you know, when I allowed myself to, to be vulnerable with my husband in, in that way um, is when it happened. However, I didn't find out until I was almost out of my first trimester that I was expecting um, at all because my period had been so, you know, off yeah. that it just, it never occurred to me that I was even pregnant. So I found out that I was pregnant because I was starting to have these like really bad um, episodes where I would eat. And then within 20 minutes or so of eating, it was like I was starving. Like I hadn't eaten in like 20, 30 days. Wow. And so I told my husband, I don't know, I think something's weird. And he said, okay, well, what do you mean? I was like, I don't, I don't know. So for whatever reason, we went to get groceries and I was like, I'm gonna take a test because you never know. So I take a test and sure enough, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. I did not expect that at all. So once I kind of got around to the idea that, okay, we're gonna have another baby. I did it once, I can do it again. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple days later, I started having another one of those episodes where I eat and I start feeling like just awful. But this time I'm like shaking and I said, you know what? I think I need to go to the ER. And this was like right um, around April when COVID was like, everything was tight and shutting down. So he drives into the ER and um, he he can't go in. So I had to go in by myself. Oh. And I, I told the PA, you know, everything that was going on. And I'm like, okay, well, let's just go ahead and do an ultrasound before we, you know, do anything else. Okay. So I'm sitting there laying, waiting. The guy comes, does the ultrasound. like. 20, 30 minutes go by and I'm thinking like, why hasn't he said anything? You know, mm -hmm. kind of bracing myself for not so good news, you know? And um, he says, you know, you're having twins, right? Oh my God. And I was like, Josephette. What? Oh <laughs> my body just went into complete shock. I was cold, I was hot, I was shaking. Next thing I knew, um, I had an IV in my arm. I was hooked up to oxygen. I just, it was literally the biggest shock of my life. <laughs> wow. Well, well you, even yeah. more shocking because you go in thinking something is like catastrophically wrong. Right. And then finding out, so just that, that kind of flip, it's got to get you. So what, did they figure out, was it a blood sugar issue or did they ever figure out why you were having those like crazy hunger bouts? Yeah. So it just turns out because I wasn't eating enough because I had two babies who were just taking everything that I put yeah. in my body. Um, and that, that's what, I, that's what it was. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. So that, did they tell you then that they suspected it was identicals or did they tell you like how, what week was that around? Like how many weeks pregnant were you? Um, it wasn't till just recently, to be honest, when I started to see my high risk doctor, I want to say like about, um, Six weeks ago, I found wow. out that they were identical twin boys. Nobody would tell me, even my OB. I don't know if it's a liability thing or what it is, but they don't want anybody saying unless it's the specialist, so. That's traumatizing right there. For, <laughs> like for you not to get the questions that you answered from your medical professionals, that's a little frustrating. Yeah, oh, girl, it was. I'm sorry, that is, that's very, very tough. So now you knew something was like, clearly because of your first pregnancy, you knew that there was definitely differences. Now, besides just kind of that, I can't believe that you were that hungry and that you just weren't eating enough. I feel so bad that, isn't it funny how like food could just solve problems? Yes. I don't know. I always feel that way. Probably just be as an Italian girl. I feel like food always solves the problem. That's just my two cents. But in your case, yes. it was probably the only time that it's true. I don't know if my, <laughs> my, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwich was really solving any problems this morning. That's what I had for breakfast, by the way. So okay. now 25 weeks in, you have your specialist. When did you start? When did you, when did your doctor decide that you needed to see a high risk doctor? Um, I want to say probably when I hit around 20 weeks, Okay. 20 weeks or so, um, you know, she said that that's who would tell me what the genders would okay. be. Um, but my husband and I couldn't wait. So we paid for the, um, yeah. you know, the stork vision or whatever. Yeah, we couldn't wait. We needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> so how many weeks was that when you went to the, the fancy pantsy ultrasound? Um, I want to say it was probably about 18 18 okay. weeks. So you were right I was there anyway. Yeah, I was like, do I want to like just do it where my insurance will cover it or do I yeah. want to just pay for it? But oh. I didn't want to pay for it. I like to save my money, but my husband wanted to know and then he got me convinced to do it. So that was it. And then once yeah. his mind is set. Now, how did you, how do we know that they're identical right now? Like, is it one sack, two sacks, one placenta? How, what was our suspicion? What's right. So the membrane is very thin they're the same gender and there is only one placenta. Okay. Okay. So, so that's a higher risk pregnancy. So that, that, when did they find out about that? The one placenta, like, was it that 20 weeks too? Like, because that usually, I'm not going to say like, usually people go to a high risk doctor, but typically with one placenta, they, they often do. So did you like, when you first went to your first appointment, did they know that it was one placenta? Um, I don't think so okay. because I actually, so at the ER, the ultrasound tech allowed me to take a picture of the, of the image that I could show my husband. And so when I started seeing my OB, I showed it to her and she didn't have really anything to say, yeah. <laughs> no matter how much I try to pry it out of her. But whenever um, I started to see the high risk doctor, he mm -hmm. was the one who immediately was able to be like, based off of the ultrasound that I was, you know, being done at that time, he was like, yeah, you know, this, this is what's going on. And then I said to him, you know, I have a picture from the ER. Can I show that to you? And he looked at it and he said, oh yeah, it's much easier to tell if they're identical or paternal when they're very small. Yeah. So they're definitely identical. And, and that is something he mentioned was that it was a high ri higher risk pregnancy because of the one placenta. Okay. And the memory so thin. So how have your past, you know, five weeks been since now we know that you're having identical boys? Is Are you happy about this? And and of course, everybody's like, we just want the babies to be happy. But we all know secretly, we kind of, did. were you hoping for a boy or boys because you have a daughter? Or did you, did you were hoping for maybe one of each? So did your wish come true? Or what did you think you would have had? Yeah, so um, my husband actually had been praying for a son since the beginning of the year. We have this thing where we make a list of our New Year's uh, resolutions, and he had had written that as one of his goals, which, you know, is crazy because I'm the one who has to end up carrying the baby. <laughs> you know, you think it'd be on my list, but he did. And so, um, you know, of course we have, you know, a daughter already and he wanted a son and, and to think now that we were given two, you know, like that's just such a blessing. And of course, I'm just, I'm so excited because I've always felt like growing up, I wasn't really like a girl's girl. I had a lot of guy friends, you know? Um, and so I just, I've always kind of felt like 
I was born to be a boy mom. Not that I can't parent my daughter well, but there's just, I don't know. There's just something where I always wanted to be a boy mom. And now Aww. I get to do it two times. <laughs> Aww, that's so sweet. It's it's wild. It's very, very wild. Yes. I think raising boys is, is a totally separate animal than the little girls. You would assume that as humans, it would be, there would be a lot of similarities, but even just in the beginning with changing boy diapers and the way that they pee kind of up versus just trickling <laughs> yeah. down, it's it's like, it's a whole new ball game. Oh, that's yes. so exciting. So now what are some of the things that you're doing now to prepare for their arrival? Um, well, we've got the nursery that we're working on, um, of course, trying to stockpile, not crazy, but decent amount of diapers and stuff. Um, I don't really know what to expect size wise because of my daughter, I gained like 60 pounds wow. and you know, I'm, I'm only 4'11". So I'm, wow. I'm very That's, that tiny must have been tough. person. Yes. And so at right now at my uh, 25 weeks with these boys, I'm almost at that weight that I was with my daughter when I gave birth. Wow. So, um, you know, I'm trying to drink more water, trying Good. to move as much as I can. Um, you know, to prepare for their arrival because I know it's probably going to be um, a lot different than yeah. it was with her. Oh my gosh, yes. But they, they, I have a weird theory and you want to hear my theory on this and I can't prove it. Uh, my theory is that my more petite moms go further along in their pregnancies. Oh yeah? I don't know if it's because gravity is in your favor <laughs> and they're closer. I don't know what it is, but uh, we've had some very petite moms at Twiniversity that have gone to 40 weeks with like no problem. And meanwhile, wow. I have moms that are, you know, six feet and up and you would be like, well, there's plenty of torso room. This is, right. you know, makes sense. Not so much, but this is totally my unproven theory. I have literally no stats to back this up. This is just <laughs> my, my gut, my gut thing going on. Now with identical boys coming, how are you, or are you even preparing your daughter for this? Oh, geez. Yes, we're trying so hard. Um, she doesn't want to hear it. You know, oh. we bought all the Amazon books. Grandma's bought them, we bought them. You're gonna be big sister, you're gonna have brothers. She, mm -mm. nope, doesn't, she doesn't care. want to. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm really like, are you excited you're gonna have brothers? No. Oh, mm -hmm. when they're here though, she'll be excited. Yeah. Because they're yeah, like little sure. dolls and they older the accessories that it comes with. Are you going to have her do like any art projects or something to put on the wall? Or have you ever thought about how she could get involved in the stuff end of having twins? Yeah, I, well, I haven't, you know, thoroughly thought about like arts and crafts wise, but I think like making sure that I incorporate her in anything that we do, um, such as like when it's diaper changing time or feeding time, just so that she kind of knows like, hey, you know, these are my brothers. They do the same thing that I do, but yeah. they need a little bit more help from mom because I'm older, you know? Oh, she's a big sister, whether she likes it or not. My sister is still resentful that she's the big sister to this day. My <laughs> sister is three years older than me and always says, I did not ask for you. She tells me all the time, <laughs> but my sister is my best friend. So it's kind of funny how she tells me that on a regular basis. And then she's like, I didn't even like you. She's like, I don't know why they brought you home. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> We're in our forties now. Do you think that maybe we could get past this portion move, of our move life? Forward. <laughs> she has not moved forward. She, she just refuses to move forward. Uh, this is just such an exciting time. I think that this week, kind of the 25th week, are you noticing, um, are you going to the bathroom a lot more? Do you have any cramping? How has your mobility been? Like physically, how are you handling the pregnancy of your 25th week? So it's really hard. Um, you know, it. my stomach is so heavy. Yeah. Um, when I'm sitting, it, it almost overlaps my entire thighs. And so um, I've thought about getting that band to kind of support my stomach, um, but I haven't, I haven't yet. Um, I probably should invest in that. My feet are swollen. When I wake up, you know, it's like I've got these crazy lip fillers. Um, it takes about like an hour, hour and a half to deflate, okay. <laughs> you know? Um, and I just, I feel like I got cuts on my hands, my feet. It's just, it's really hard. You know, it's, yeah. it's really hard um, being this uh, pregnant and, and uh, the doctors have told me like, you know, your biggest challenge, the bigger you get is going to be not falling because you're so small and there's going to be a whole lot of stomach. 
you yeah. know, to come. And I sit there and I look at myself and I think, well, how, how much more stomach is going to come? Could you stand up? Could we see your tiny little belly, which is probably not so tiny? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. You're perfect. Do you know that? You literally yeah. are built perfectly. <laughs> You were made for that belly, but it is going to get bigger. Oh my gosh, it's going to get bigger. We're just going to hire um, young children to walk underneath you to hold your belly up as you walk. I think that's yeah. what we're going to do. We're going to put that on Craigslist and see if we could get anybody to stand underneath you. They have to be very, very tiny. Or maybe just a large dog. A lot, I think yeah. that would be like a Great Dane would probably be good. I strongly recommend that you grab the, the prenatal cradle from It's You Babe. Like no joke. Grab it on Amazon today. Plus, if you have like flex spending, I don't know what type of jobs you guys have, but it's usually covered by flex spending. It's also considered a piece of durable medical equipment. So your health insurance might even cover it. So you oh, may wow. actually have to pay nothing for it. So check it out. But I know it's on Amazon. It is especially important now because, and why we really, first of all, it's one of the only ones that's made for twin parents. So it, mm -hmm. it, it distributes the weight so it's over your shoulders, where all the other bands kind of just wrap you around your mm -hmm. belly. This one, it goes under your belly, beautifully crisscrosses against your boobs, and then it holds the weight on your shoulders. So I would definitely, 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 like 1 million percent get that like the minute you get off, buy it. And when you buy it, you really have to look at the sizes because I find they run a little bit big, which isn't bad because you want right. it to be big, especially when you're pregnant. But sometimes people buy the wrong size thinking that they should buy it for the size they think they are now, not right. the size they were. Buy mm -hmm. it for the size you were. So you could always okay. measure too. But it really makes a huge, 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 huge difference. So yeah. yeah, how are your, um, to get really TMI, how are your boobs? Are you having, like, are they very heavy? Like, do you just feel very top heavy in general? I do because I've always been just very overall petite, just everywhere. You know, um, I think I was about, um, 90 pounds till I was about 23, 24 years old. Um, so I, this is all very new to me, oh, <laughs> you know, so um, yeah and it is it is uncomfortable it is uncomfortable um hurts you know and everything itches it's yeah <laughs> talk to your doctor too about compression garments for like compression socks if you're finding that your legs are swelling i know it's hot where you are and i feel so bad for you but it may be like a flip-flop sock kind of situation that we may need to have but you could mm. buy compression socks too there's quite a few of them actually that are out there. And sometimes they even make them for like diabetics and stuff like see exactly, no, it's not diabetics. I think diabetics, it's the loose socks, but you want compression socks. So talk to your right. doctor about compression socks. The funny part about compression socks are you got to put them on right when you get up in the morning. Otherwise, like the minute you throw your legs over the bed, your water is going to start to build up. So you got to, yeah. I, so many of our moms put them on while they're in bed and like, they're trying to like get their leg in a sock and <laughs> yeah. everything. But it's, I mean, you have a few weeks to go. Like it's, it's good that you have weeks to go. So you're just going to have to kind of wade through it. Did, were you on bed rest yeah. at all with your daughter? Um, I was not. I was not on bed rest. But I would not be surprised if that happens this yeah. time around. Uh, but everything else is looking good. Your cervix is doing good. The babies are growing appropriately. All that is, is doing good. Yeah, they're almost two pounds each. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so sweet. And how, are, how, like when they're moving, do you feel them super extra because they're right there. I mean, they're right all in your business right now. Like how yeah. often are they moving and have you noticed the pattern of the way that they move? Yeah. So the twin on my right is constantly moving, constantly has something going on. Um, twin on the left, you know, every now and then, you know, he moves, but yeah, I think I notice the movement the most right before I go to sleep. And I'm like, of course, of course, this is when you guys want to just hang out, <laughs> throw a party in there, <laughs> you know? Well, when you're walking and you're in your car and stuff during the day, you're you're like rocking them. So when you yeah. lay down at night, they're like, um, no, uh, get up, please. Please stand, <laughs> yeah. up. please stand up and keep rocking us. We like that. That was a lot more comfortable. So I always tell our Twin University students, it's like when you're in a car and the car stops, you like if you fall, fell asleep or somebody, well, not while you're driving, 
but like if you know if your husband's driving and you fall asleep in a passenger seat and then you get to a red light you wake up that's what happens to the babies when you lay down at night they just hit a red light and they're just freaking out have you learned any hacks like is there something that you've done so far that you're like oh my gosh everybody needs to know about this because it's made my life so much simpler so anything so far from your first pregnancy experience to this one, is there anything that that you kind of say, oh, this is this is the go-to thing to do? Um, be humble and ask for help. Ask for help. Um, that's something that I think I learned very quickly yeah. this time around. It, it is hard, you know. Um, as a stay-at-home mom and wife, there's just so many things that I have to get done, you know, um, but it is so important to ask for help yeah. because we're, you're only one person. There's only so many hours in the day um, and it's, it's okay. It's okay to not be okay and say, hey, I, I need help. You know, yeah. as, as minimal as it may be, whatever that means to you, just ask for help. Oh. I wish that people would. They're so hesitant because everybody wants, I, I get it. We all want to be strong and independent, totally fine. You will be again, but if you, like if, if it's challenging you, if it's challenging for you to even just get up to move, right? like that's, there's a lot that has to be done. How are you dealing, like is your daughter constantly on you? Like how are you balancing just like pregnancy relaxation with being a mom? Um, well, currently I would say it's non-existent. <laughs> um, the most relaxation that I get is whenever I put her down for an afternoon nap, whether I'm actually sleepy or not, I yeah. go ahead and lay myself down on the bed, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's to scroll on my phone or okay. just, you know, hope to fall asleep. Um, just because she is so active and I've, yeah. I've had a lot of that like mom guilt, I think mm -hmm. that maybe a lot of parents have when they're about to have another baby, yeah. let alone two where I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I wish I was fun, cool summer mom, you know, outside with the water hose and sprinkler, but, but I can't, you know, so I have to kind of think of other activities that I can do for her, yeah. um, to just kind of keep her engaged and know like, Hey, you know, I, I still see you, you know? So I guess the only thing I do for myself is just go down for a nap when she does, you know? Good, good. You have to, you have to have to rest. Otherwise you're going to collapse. So the thing is, Literally. is like a lot of people are like, well, I'll just keep going. Nope. Your body will actually stop for you. Just like it did when you went to the hospital that first time. Right. So you're, exactly. you have to listen to your body. Cause if you don't, your, your body will just take what it needs. So yeah. And remember this is one summer. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm a big fan of the guilt. I love guilt. I have it all the time. So it's my, <laughs> it's my nature, but this is just one summer, you know, and you're yeah. giving her two brothers. So you're giving her two people to play with. So it's one right. summer that she's not getting fun time sprinkler mom. Plus, by the way, nobody's going outside right now. We're all kind of in lockdown anyway. So even her friends yeah. are, are probably staying put. So you know what? Next summer, it's going to be a totally different thing. The boys will be in their carriage. She'll have sprinkler time. It's going to be yeah. so much better. So whenever you feel the guilt coming on, just really try to think of, of what's going to happen ahead. Think about, right. you know, Christmas morning when the three of them are fighting over a present that one of them wanted and you could just sit there and yes. laugh thinking about, well, look, look at this chaos that you've created. Yeah. With these extra little twenties. There's so much great stuff coming up. I'm really, I really want you to, to try to focus on that if you can, because guilt, it honestly is just a very wasted emotion, especially now when the boys really do need your positivity right. more than anything. Because if your mind isn't in the right spot, your body's going to follow wherever your mind is. So try right. to just get yourself into uh, a good zone. Now, what I would also say something to start doing that would be good practice is when you go to lay down while she's napping, there's apps out there that have like five minute meditations. So mm -hmm. if you find that your brain can't shut down and you're feeling bad or you're feeling guilty or you're feeling sad, they're all free. There's a lot of them out there. Just do like a five minute one and get yourself out of that kind of mind space and yeah. then take a nap. Yes. But it's tough because once our mind keeps moving, girl, it ain't fun. I'm telling you, yeah. I, don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't practice what I preach, by the way. I sit up all night <laughs> and I, I worry and I feel guilty about crap. Oh, this was so much fun. I can't thank you enough for just playing with us today. And I'm so excited that you're going to let us kind of follow you through your pregnancy. Oh, yeah, me too. It is so good. I love it Thanks so, so much. so much. Oh, is there any other questions that are kind of pressing on your mind that I might be able to help you with this week? Um, 
No is a fine answer to have too, by the way. But you know what? I actually do have a question. All right. Um, when is the appropriate time, you think, to start um, packing a bag, a hospital bag, with twins? I honestly, so if you're at 25 weeks, I would really start thinking about what you want to have in your bag because mm -hmm. now, you know, we're not really running out to the store as much as we, right. and even if you could, by the way, you may not because you're not as comfortable. Like, I don't even know if you're driving or not driving with the belly that you have. So, right. um, I would say you need to start thinking now, at least of what you want to have in the bag. Mm -hmm. And then by week 29, I would like it to just be packed and ready to roll. And if you're gonna do like cord blood banking or anything like that, you really do have to get that together now because they need to send you your kits. And I don't know if people are dropping them off or they drop them off to your doctor's offices. But okay. at this time, if there's stuff like that that you wanna do, you gotta get that all lined up. Another thing that I would think about because it's gonna be, you know, this isn't like an instant thing, but if you mm. guys don't have like a will or life insurance and stuff like that, try to start figuring out what those items are that you want to have in place because that could take weeks. So, right. you know, if you want, if you don't have a life insurance policy or you don't have a will, like I know nobody wants to talk about like big picture stuff like that. Right. But true, like truthfully, Joseph, but nobody ever wants to but it's something that we all should have. And so just get it done. Just rip off the freaking bandaid, just get this crap done and then just call it a day. But that's something also now that I would, if I were you start thinking about at least what you want to have. Right. And then, you know, kind of lay the groundwork, but for the hospital stuff, you know, I would definitely have some gowns. I would definitely get some masks because the hot, I mean, they may give you masks while you're there, but, um, I, I know that our moms now are bringing their own. I would definitely, definitely 1 million billion percent if you, did, did you breastfeed your daughter? I tried. Okay, so with this, I would take the, the breastfeeding class, our breastfeeding class, I would start taking it now. And okay. then because you have access for it for a long time. So why I'm even saying this, and it's not to like make a sale, like, cause that's clearly not what it is. I, we really made it to help people, but we're finding now because of COVID, that lactation um, people in the hospital aren't being, they're not, they're limiting the exposure of the patients. So you might not have a typical lactation experience because of COVID. Right. So it's okay. kind of, you know, to, to get ahead of it and to be armed with the correct information, it might not be a bad time to start now. Okay. So, so you got some stuff to do, but we'll, we'll yeah. catch up with you and we'll like, I'll help you throughout the whole thing. But those are kind of like the big things of like, what's in your hospital bag, the uh, CBR stuff, if you're going to get it, um, life insurance will stuff like that, like start thinking about that. And then next time we kind of catch up, we'll see if you did any of it or at least talked about it. But I think that people sometimes plan too late with a hospital bag and then you're just shoving yes. it in a plastic target bag on your way out. <laughs> so let's try not to have that happen. Yeah. Um, for because of COVID too, people are finding they always wish they brought more snacks. So oh, yes. Buy some Luna bars. And already we know that you are on the hungrier side of the universe. Yes. So you really want to make sure that you're buying snacks that are non perishable and you put those in your hospital bag. Because not okay. only, you know, you could sometimes get two trays in a hospital, but if they don't allow you and your husband ends up being able to stay with you, he may have no food but the snacks that you bring. Right, wow. So, yeah. so because they're probably not going to let him come and go. I mean, your state isn't, you know, doing the best in relation to the Rona. So I don't know what the specific regulations of your hospital are, but I know that up here kind of, you know, in the, the original epicenter in New York, that once you were in, you were not allowed to leave. So you want oh, to make sure that you're packing enough snacks. If he needs clothes, you want, he's got to pack his bag too. I really hope he packs his own bag, but he probably won't, you'll probably do it. But just make <laughs> sure that you pack a lot of button down shirts for him because skin to skin uh, contact with the twenties is going to be really, really important. And if he's wearing a polo or a t-shirt, he's not going to be able to have that. Okay. So button down shirts for that information. Girl, yes. that's what we do. That's what, that's what we're full of it. 
and a lot of it, <laughs> and not just with twin information. We're literally just full of it, crapola. That's what I'm full of. <laughs> All right, so we'll catch up with you soon. I really want to say thank you for chatting with us. And uh, for those of you that are watching, just know we will talk more with Josephette. So this is just stage one of hopefully a lot of conversations that, and we're gonna kind of follow along. And then I can't wait to meet these little dudes. So yeah, Yay! next time we talk, hopefully we'll talk about some names. We'll figure out other things that we need to prepare, but you stay right there, Josephette. Don't hang up on me, but say goodbye to our Twiniversity world. Bye you guys. See you later, alligators. <laughs>